Mm. Well, joining us now is Michael Jackson's nephew, Taj Jackson. Uh, Taj, thank you for coming in thank to talk to us this morning. Me. There have been, of course, all sorts of accusations about Michael Jackson's behaviour, and they've been tested in court, mm -hmm. of course. He was never found guilty yeah. of any of these um, assaults. The claims in the Leaving Neverland mm -hmm. documentary um, refer to two men now yeah. who, as boys, testified under oath mm -hmm. that he had always you know, behaved perfectly decently with them. But they say they feel compelled now to speak out mm. about their truth, yeah. what actually happened to them. Mm. And they make allegations which are very disturbing mm -hmm. to listen to. Yeah. And they're accusations about your uncle. Mm. When you listened or watched what they said, what did it make you feel? Uh, gosh, I was angry. I was um, hurt, felt uh, betrayed by Wade, who's a friend. Um, Wade Robson, who Wh is one of the men yes. who says that uh, Michael yes. abused him from yes. the age of seven. Yes, I personally, uh, when he test the day he testified on 2005, which he was an adult, he was in his 20s, I thanked him. You know, I, I, was, I felt the right thing to do. I was like, you know, not many people did that for my uncle. He and testified I, in support of Michael at he, the time. He was the first witness. He was, he was the first defense witness. And was under oath. Under oath, mm. the first defense witness. And, you know, you don't put someone that you molested for seven years as your first start defense witness. He's claiming that he was scared, but he, he's in the safety of the courtroom at that point. Mm. One word and my uncle would have went to jail forever. So, you know, he has his own stories, and he, but I think the hard thing for me, and I'm trying not to get emotional about this because it's my uncle and it's, you know, I've seen him do so much good in the world and they've turned it against him and it's my biggest fear. That interview that I found that I did with him, he didn't do many interviews, as you no, know. No, he did not. And I had about a 30, 40 minute conversation yeah. with him and he got very emotional when this yeah. subject came up. It was very raw to him mm -hmm. at the time. It was a time all these allegations and cases were swirling around and so on. And, you know, he, if you take him at his own word, this to him was the worst possible thing that anyone could say about him. Of yeah. course, the converse side would be yeah. if you were trying to protect what you were doing, yeah. that's exactly how you might behave exactly, yeah. when you're asked about yeah. it. And, the, and the, the, the reality of this situation is Michael's been dead now for 10 years yeah. and we may never get to the bottom, I guess, mm. without any real hard evidence emerging other than people's testimonies mm. about what went on. But here's the difficult question, yeah. which I would yeah. always have for any of member course. of oh, Michael's yeah, family. Definitely. What he was doing mm. as a man in his 30s, 40s, mm. By having sleepovers mm -hmm. Little with young, always young boys, yeah. right? Not no, girls, young no, boys. No, there were girls right? as well. But, but very few, yeah. it's mainly young boys, yeah. and traveling around the world with them. That is not normal behavior for a man in his 30s or mm -hmm. 40s. It isn't, is it? I've ne we never said that, our families never said it was because my uncle wasn't, didn't have a normal childhood. He never, you know, he used to talk to us, you know, because we were around that same age, you know, that Wade was and that same thing. He would ask us, what's a birthday party like? You know, you're hanging out with all these friends. Tell me about it. What's, what's it like? I didn't get to do that. Tell me about that. When my mom passed, we, all my friends went to Buck, that went to Buckley. We all went to Havenhurst, mm -hmm. hung out. You know what we did? We played hide and go seek. That's, that's my uncle. What grown man in his 30s or 40s plays hide and go seek? It's like, that's... Well, I guess, I guess somebody who, if you were playing devil's advocate here, was very cynically and deliberately creating a fantasy world which would protect people from getting to the truth about what he might have been up to with these kids. And I also, mean, that's, that's what the... Yeah, of the course. Cynic of, co of course. But, but also... Yeah. The, yeah. You know, it would have to be the most elaborate scheme that the world's ever seen. Except, of course, again, playing devil's advocate. Yeah, well, I think it's important I, to... With, yeah, with no, it, it definitely is. You know, nobody knows what went on when that door shut. 100%. When he had these sleepovers with these boys as to what really went on. And what is disturbing when you watch the documentary is this sense that the door shut and really only Michael and these boys know what then happened. So you can have all the investigations yes, that you yes, like. Okay. But that is a reality, isn't it? That, and in that case, you have to go through motive in terms of what they get out of it and also credibility. And I think that's where us as a family, we've been really upset about the media is, and I, and I understand that, you know, it's, 
when it's an, an a, you know alleged victim, it's it's hard to investigate them, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. in that way. But he's not here to defend himself, so that's the least you can do is look into. And if you do a 10-minute search on these people, that you would find out really the story of what they're really. Are you? After. I mean. The family are very incensed by this, as yeah. any family would be, if they felt genuinely that their loved one was an innocent person. Are you 100% sure about Michael's innocence, or is it 99% given what's it, coming it, out? As an abuse survivor myself, if I, for one second, thought that my uncle... I spent hundred, I spent probably thousands of hours with my uncle, mm. Michael, since I was a baby, all the way up to when he passed. I've been around him my whole life. If I thought for one second that he was capable of any of this, I'd be the, probably the first one screaming about this. But he never, 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 never was like that. And it, not only for me, find the people that know Wade and my uncle, and they're all defending my uncle. I mean, what's interesting is others, Even like, Mac- others like Macaulay Culkin, yeah. who were very young when they befriended Michael, yeah. they tell a very different story. Yeah. And they say there was no abuse and nothing no. untoward happened. So you really come down to the, to the credibility he said, he said, of the yeah. accusers. And that's, the th- that's, that's all we're asking. We've, we've never said, just believe us. We just said, look into them. But the media doesn't want to do that. And that's what's hard for us, mm. because my uncle's not there. So at least they can do that for us. Do you think that they are financially motivated? There's an appeal right now, and in, in for uh, they sued the estate for hundreds of millions of dollars. So right now they have they have two appeals coming up this year. So yes, I do believe that. Because on the other side, mm-hmm. of course, people say there's a financial motive for you to defend the reputation of I th- Michael. I think there's a, a duty for me to defend, but I'm not making money off his royalties. I wish I was making money off mm-hmm. his royalties, but I'm not. I'm I'm here. I flew here because I wanted to defend my uncle because he's been nothing but great to me. Mm. I have a three month old baby that I just left to do this. That's how strong I feel about mm. this. And it, to me, it's just, I, we just want our chance to tell the truth. Yeah. Listen, well, it's, a, it's an extraordinary uh, story. It has been for a long time, yeah. but I think, I, it, it, to me, there is a problem when Michael Jackson has been dead for 10 years yeah. and the accusers said the complete opposite. Mm before Under he oath. died. Yes. And I, I think that this is one of those situations where, you know, as I say, it comes down to how much do we believe yeah. people making wow. different claims now yeah. to ones they've made before. And what, I mean, just finally, yeah. What, yeah, it, what effect is it having on the family? <sighs> it's... Because this is devastating if it's well, and true. His, and his kids and in particular. And it's yeah. devastating how are his if kids it's not true. This? They're not doing well. You know, they have to go to school, you know, and it's hard because some of them you know, are trying to ignore it. But I, me in hindsight, no, you can't do that. Right. You know, you can't ignore it. You know, a lot of my family members think, mm. you know, the bigger ones think if I talk about it, it'll shed, you know, it'll bring more light to it and I don't want to bring more attention to it. So they're not saying anything. Mm. But I know how social media works nowadays. Yeah. If you don't say anything, people will just take it for you what it is. You get convicted immediately. It, immediately. So yeah. we, we can't win either way. And that's yeah. the hard thing. Well, Taz Jackson, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. No, we greatly appreciate you making such an effort to come on and, uh, and putting the other side. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.